that everybody? Okay, great. Welcome. I'm Michael Helmick. I'm the president of Rockingham Community College, and I want to welcome all of you to what I think is one of the most exciting events in the history of this college. Uh, and thank you for being here. We are gathered here today to make an announcement about a project that will provide for a critical need uh, in educating the health science students at RCC, and that is the RCC Simulated Hospital. You see pictures flashing up there, but you're going to see a really cool picture in a minute. First, I want to recognize some of the people who are attending today, and I will preface this by saying, forgive me if I leave you out. It is not purposeful. Um, we have a lot of people here. I would love to recognize every one of you, but there is a limit to how much time we can spend here. But I will do my best. Our, our platform guest I want to introduce first, uh, Mr. Craig Cardwell, who is Executive Director of Reeds Valeria Foundation. Um, Mr. Skip Balsley, Vice Chair of the Reeds Valeria Foundation. Mr. Grayson Witt, who is Chair of the Rockingham Community College Trustees. Dr. Jan Overman, who is Vice President for Academic Affairs here at RCC. Ms. Tiffany Morris, Dean of Health Sciences here at RCC, and Ms. Jeanette Webb, who is Capital Campaign Assistant to the President. I also want to recognize in the audience the RCC trustees. If you all would stand, I'm going to do my best to identify you. I saw one, two, and three, so uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, four. I knew there was another one. <laughs> Four of our trustees are here today. I'm not going to go down the list of names. Uh, also, the RCC Foundation Board. I saw several members of that board. If you all would stand so that we can recognize you. Great group of folks that help support the college in so many ways. So thank you for being here. Uh, county commissioners are represented today by Mr. Mark Richardson, who is here. Mark, stand up so they can see you. It's, it's a close room. I think you're the only county commissioner who made it today, so thank you for being here. Mike Finley, who is here representing, representing Senator Richard Burr's office. Mike, thanks for being here. And um, I'm going to have to put my glasses on after all. Uh, Nancy Maza, is she here? There you go. Hey, Nancy, how are you doing? Did I pronounce that right? Okay, great. She's representing U.S. Representative Howard Coble's office. So uh, did I leave anybody out? Jeanette? We're getting to her. <laughs> okay, great. All right, great. Thank you. Let's give those folks a hand for being here today. Also attending, we have several members of the Reeds Valeria Foundation Board and who will be introduced by Craig Cardwell, who is Executive Director of the uh, Reeds Valeria Foundation. So uh, we've got more to go on this program before we get everybody introduced. Several years ago, uh, the college's five-year plan identified a need to build a new health sciences building to meet the needs of our health sciences students who are lined up back here. That's the group that we applauded as they came in. This health sciences building would have cost about $40 million and might have been built if money had been available, but you all know what happened to the economy beginning in about 2008. In 2011, the RCC administration, the trustees, the RCC faculty and, and staff, and other interested groups, including our two hospitals, began working on a concept to provide an innovative approach to healthcare education. The idea for repurposing two buildings on our campus to meet the needs for improved healthcare education and to provide a space for the growing early college high school was developed and working with some very creative architects a plan evolved. Located in the N. Jerry Owens Human Services Building, the RCC Simulated Hospital Project was approved by the RCC trustees in the fall of 2011, and financial support for this project began to flow in immediately. When the final cost estimates were developed in the summer of 2011, we realized that we would not only meet the needs of the original Health Sciences Building, but we, would, but we would also be able to reach far beyond that original idea and provide a better education at a fraction of the cost. This simulated hospital will cost less than $5 million to build. Therefore, we are saving the taxpayers, Mark, $35 million. I think that's worth applauding. <laughs> And another added benefit is that we'll be in this facility within 18 months. So start to finish, we're going to be done and back in that facility by January of 2015. So why are we building this facility and how will it improve health science education at RCC? At RCC, we currently do an excellent job of training future healthcare workers. You can ask any of these folks here. 
Our graduates will work in the ever-expanding health science fields, most of them very close to home. We are building this facility because it will improve the way we teach health sciences at RCC. This simulated hospital will accomplish several things. First, we will consolidate all of our health sciences into one building. Currently, we are scattered out across campus in three different buildings with health sciences. And we will change the way that we teach health sciences education. A simulated hospital is a departure from the way we usually teach our health science classes. We currently teach in isolation. Each area has its own space. Now we will be integrated just like it is in a hospital. Using state-of-the-art mannequins and defined scenarios, we will be able to simulate almost any healthcare issue that students could face in the hospital. And you're gonna hear more about this in a moment when one of our speakers tells you about that specifically. This facility will provide the best place to practice healthcare without harming a patient. Perhaps most importantly, by bringing all the students together to work with the patients, we will emphasize the team efforts that our hospitals now demand. Second, we will provide a place for the community to come and learn about the latest techniques in healthcare. Potential students will be able to view classes in progress as they traverse the facility, perhaps sparking an interest in, the career, in a health sciences career. By incorporating glass walls as outer classroom walls, easy viewing and discussions will take place in the hallway among students who are viewing what is going on behind those glass walls. Local hospitals and healthcare professionals will be able to use this facility for their healthcare training and continuing education. Our hospitals have already told us how excited they are to be able to turn their educational facilities into revenue producing and use our facilities for education. So another plus. The large room that will be in the middle of this structure, the atrium, will become another gathering place for the community meetings as we welcome a variety of groups onto our campus. There is no better place than a state-of-the-art simulated hospital to generate new and creative ideas to help this community grow and prosper. And we will do what we always do here at RCC. We will welcome all groups onto this campus to help us with that. Finally, the completion of this facility will help us grow our health care programs and make education more accessible for our students. The biggest barrier to health science education is a lack of clinical sites. One of our students' biggest barriers is travel to those clinical sites. And with gas at nearly $4 a gallon, you can imagine what a burden that would be for our students. Those sites are scattered all over the triad region and even up into Virginia. Up to 25% of a student's clinical time can be spent in an approved simulated hospital. Our goal will have this become an approved facility so that our students can spend at least 25% of their time, their clinical time, in this facility. As an approved clinical site, this facility will not only make getting to clinical opportunities easier, but will allow us to have more options for training. Creating this facility and making it available to our students in the community will not only improve RCC health science programs, but it will help us do what we like to do, which is help the community. Two weeks ago, we dedicated another facility on this campus, our new welding lab and fabrication facility. And I mentioned the rock group, The Beatles, and that famous song that they had with a little help from our friends. In the last two years, RCC has reached out to the community to develop a host of partnerships. And those partnerships are helping us develop a local workforce. This project today would not be happening if it were not for a lot of help from our friends. And today, we have a very special, special group here to tell us about their part of the project. Craig Cardwell, Executive Director of the Reedsville Area Foundation, will come forward to introduce the members of the RAF board who are with us today before he turns the microphone over to Mr. Skip Balsley, Vice Chair of the Reedsville Area Foundation Board. Skip will be followed in turn by several other individuals who have, have been instrumental in making this project come to fruition. And by the time it's all over, you'll see what all the excitement and fuss is about. So Craig. Thank you, Dr. Helmick. Uh, he's a hard act to follow. What a, what a speaker. Uh, I know a number of you are out there saying, uh, I've never heard of the Reasonable Area Foundation. We really are uh, pretty much of a, uh, a good secret for the county, but uh, uh, thanks to some work we're doing, we're going to try to be a little bit more uh, public in the, uh, the work we're doing. But we're a health legacy foundation that was formed in 2001. Uh, we're based in Reedsville, but our board decided in 2001 
that we would serve all of Rockingham County equally. Uh, we fund in health care, education, human services, and community and economic development. Uh, over the past 12 years, we've approved, or the board has approved, uh, uh, right at $18 million uh, for the benefit of uh, Rockingham County. So it's my pleasure now to uh, introduce the board and a couple of our guests. And uh, if they would stand, as I, I name them, please, uh, the chair of the Regional Area Foundation is Donna Rothrock. Uh, Skip Bosley, who has been introduced previously, is the vice chair. Uh, Dr. Wayne Keeling. Uh, Lee Najelski, Scotty Penn, who is the chair of the program committee that considered this project uh, initially, uh, Kathy Helm, Chuck Clark, and Judge Ed Wilson. Uh, we do have uh, five board members who couldn't be with us today, Victor Armstrong, Mary Fagan, Dr. Lafayette Judkins, Jonathan Craig and Ken Norman and thank you all and we do have two guests uh, uh, we do have two guests uh, that I'd like to introduce to you uh, Dr. Jennifer Nixon who is the executive director of the Rockingham County Healthcare Alliance and she has helped us evaluate uh, consideration of, uh, of this project. Uh, also, I would like to introduce Dr. David Brenberg, who is uh, a marketing professor at Virginia Tech, and his uh, challenge is to market, uh, develop a marketing plan for our foundation uh, here in Rockingham County. Uh, our foundation serves only Rockingham County, so that's the that's the service area of, uh, of our organization. Uh, what I'd like to do now is introduce uh, Skip Bosley, who's going to make the announcement. Thank you, Craig. When the Reedsville Area Foundation's program committee was initially presented plans for the simulated hospital, you could sense, you could sense the buzz in the room. Later, when we received more details about the project, the question became not whether to fund the simulated hospital, but at what level of funding. It turned out to be $1.7 million. <laughs> the health science programs at RCC are known for their outstanding graduates. Now that students will be able to learn from advanced technology in a simulated hospital environment, they will have a clear advantage, a clear competitive edge in the job market. As our county's population ages and more people access care under the Affordable Care Act, the demand for health care professionals will grow. This facility and the outstanding programs housed here will help providers address these challenges. This facility will be a valuable resource for Rockingham County in the recruitment of industry and other efforts to rebuild the county's economy. <coughs> the simulated hospital addresses three of our funding priorities, health, education, and economic development. I think it is significant that the funding for this project comes from private sources, individuals, and businesses who along with us want to invest in Rockingham County. Indeed, progressive programs such as this deserve our support. I'd like to commend Dr. Helmick and his team for their forward thinking, and we are pleased to be a partner with them in making their vision a reality. Thank you. Skip has another appointment. He's not running away from us. Um, I'm back up here because the one thing we would like you to see, which is our next slide that's going to be coming up, is what the Reesville Area Foundation has chosen to name. There's always naming opportunities in every project. In fact, if you would like to have a naming opportunity, we have a few left. Um, but Jeanette's going to do the Vanna White thing for us and show you what it is. But they have chosen to name two areas. With such a generous gift, there were two areas. One will be the atrium, and the other will be the 
Skills Lab Suite. I wanted to get that right. Uh, these are two, quite frankly, two of the coolest areas in the building. Uh, the big uh, room that I mentioned that connects two sides of the building. If we were sitting in the building, you could see it, but quite frankly, right now, we couldn't all sit in that building. But when this building is opened, you'll see that the atrium is going to be the center focal point of this. And how appropriate is it that uh, an, uh, an organization like the Reedsville Area Foundation would give a gift that would allow us to name that central uh, gathering spot for everybody in the community? So those are the two locations that will be. Let's give them a big hand for their forward thinking. <laughs> Now, Mr. Grayson Witt will give us a few words from the trustees. Thank you, Dr. Tillmick. And on behalf of the Rockingham Community College trustees, we'd like to thank the Reedsville Area Foundation for their generosity in this gift. Uh, it will definitely go a long way, as Dr. Helmick has said. Um, this gift solidifies the board's position on combining the con health science services here at the college. And with the simulated hospital, that makes us another step forward. Our board is committed to be the very, to be the very best project and best program, state of the art that we could find. This will happen. It is our hope that consolidating these health services into one building and providing students with the most technologically advanced education through simulation that the college would then produce students that produce a strong skill set and would make them workforce ready. We feel that the Reasonable Area Foundation's leadership and giving the community will soon be served in a facility that will lead the way in health care education here in Rockingham County. Again, our sincere thanks for the gift. Good afternoon. I'm Jan Everman, and I serve as the Vice President for Academic Affairs at Rockingham Community College, and I'm so excited to see all of you here this afternoon. But on behalf of the faculty and staff of the academic division of RCC, I want to offer my sincere appreciation to the generosity of the Reedsville Area Foundation for the purpose of the creation of this simulated hospital. It is evident that the foundation shares our vision of excellence in education, quality instruction, and preparation of our citizens for quality jobs in the area of health care. An area of service that impacts all of our lives and all of our families' lives in this area. Healthcare education, as Dr. Helmick alluded to a while ago, has evolved significantly over the last, particularly last 30 years. And I've seen this firsthand. I was a nursing student at East Carolina University in the 1970s, a long time ago, and have had the privilege of being in nursing education for over 25 years prior to going into administration. Clinical education in the 1970s was readily available in acute settings where our instructors could easily identify all levels of patients with whom we practiced our craft. We would be assigned to patients requiring basic to complex nursing care and knew that the patients would probably be in the hospital for several days so that we, the novice students, had the opportunity to become competent at the task after a few attempts. But today, as you are all well aware, a three-day hospitalization means that the patient is very acute, very sick, and complex care is required. And the goal is to have the patient relocated to their home as soon as possible often with tubes and casts and dressings and machines, all for families to manage in a home setting. Surgeries in the past that would require that three-day hospital stay are now done in our outpatient settings. I see some physicians out there that that is true. Whether it's tonsillectomy, gallbladders, knees, appendectomies, they're all kind of drive-by now. But this type of clinical practice does not allow a novice healthcare student like the ones that you see here to gain basic clinical experience in hospital settings because the patients are simply not there. As we know, developing competencies and basic skills that is essential to mastering more complex skills, and in this case, patient care. Therefore, healthcare education has evolved to providing clinical education and simulation 
to meet the needs of healthcare students to ensure competency and experience to prepare our students for the world of work in healthcare. Through high fidelity mannequins and simulated clinical environments, students experience all levels of preparation. These are mannequins that can talk and have all bodily functions, just like patients. They are not just a dummy in the bed. They are program computerized simulators. The gift provided today will assist RCC in creating this state-of-the-art simulated hospital, a learning environment that will serve as an interdisciplinary center for students in EMS, nursing, respiratory, phlebotomy, surgical technology, public service, and industrial technology to master clinical skills set in a prescribed setting ensuring that specific competencies have been met. Employers, you can be assured that the RCC Health Science graduate is prepared and competent to meet that entry level requirement in their chosen field of study. They will have documents of specific competencies based on their intentional learning, not learning that has been left to chance and dependent on a population in a clinical setting. RCC's health science programs will become a first choice for students desiring to enter the world of higher education and health science. A tour of our new simulated hospital will convey to the prospective student that RCC is committed to being a best practice in the area of healthcare education. As Dr. Helmut alluded to a while ago, this simulated hospital will have simulation spaces with glass walls so that our middle school and high school students coming through on tours will see our students at work and say, that's what I want to do. That is what a day in the life of a nurse or a day in the life of a surge tech looks like. This generous gift by the Reedsville Area Foundation is making our dreams a reality. The dream to offer you, our students, a state-of-the-art learning environment for healthcare careers, benefiting their lives and ours as lifelong consumers of healthcare. Now I'd like to introduce Ms. Tiffany Morris, Dean of Health Science, for additional comments. Good afternoon. I won't tell you what I was doing in 1970. <laughs> I do want to say on behalf of all of the um, health and public safety faculty, our current students and our future students, we again want to express our appreciation and our gratitude for your investment in such a worthy educational opportunity. I also have some good news. Because Dr. Helmick and Dr. Overman were so thorough in their presentation, mine will be very brief. And I want to just reiterate and reemphasize some key points. My topic is the impact of this simulation hospital on student learning. Number one, we will be able to provide a fail-safe environment for students. Why is this important? Well, according to the Institute of Medicine, 50,000 to 100,000 people die every year from a medical error. 1.5 million people are injured due to a medical error. So with the simulation, we're able to allow students to make a mistake and not do any harm to a real person. Y'all should clap about that. <laughs> it will allow students to experience the consequences because oftentimes in clinical, the instructors can't allow a student to make mistakes. Thank you, instructors. <laughs> So therefore, sometimes students don't get the reality of what will happen if you don't check an armband, if you give the wrong medication. So at least with the simulation experience, they will be, be able to follow it all the way through and experience what a flat line really means. Secondly, our simulated hospital is designed with the present and the future in mind. We have anticipated future healthcare programs not currently offered at RCC and have designed our learning spaces accordingly. 
Next, our simulated hospital will be a recruitment tool for all of those persons who may be interested in a healthcare field and what I believe it will drastically change the economic disposition of our current state. Lastly, the simulated hospital will impact current and future partnerships with our community clinical affiliates. We want RCC to become a training facility to provide continuing education and revalidation of skills of those individuals who are already healthcare professionals. We want you to let us help you maintain your clinical expertise. The simulated hospital will significantly impact our faculty, our students, our community partners, and those of you who will receive care from our graduates. This investment helps to ensure that we are not your typical community college. In fact, we will be the gold standard in North Carolina for healthcare education. Thank you, Tiffany, and, and all the rest of the speakers. You actually stole my next line. <laughs> you didn't even realize it. That's all right, I'll reiterate. <laughs> That we are not your typical community college. That is our new tagline. We set out to change the view and the impact of this institution on this community, and we weren't going to be doing it by sitting still. So I hope that you agree that what we are getting ready to start here, this next phase of healthcare education at RCC, will make us once again not your typical community college because we don't want to be. We want to be that unique community college. This new facility will be the first simulated hospital in the Triad region. Yes, the first simulated hospital in the Triad region, and it's here in Rockingham County. No other college or university in our area will have the level of sophistication that RCC will have, and it is because of the generous support of this community, especially the Reedsville Area Foundation, that we are able to make this happen. Originally, this project was to be a three-phase project, but with a very generous gift from the Reeves Valeria Foundation, we now have a two-phase project, and construction begins later this fall. We are moving forward with this project, and we will finish it on time. We plan to have all the fundraising completed by the end of December, so if you are in the audience and you want to write us a check, we'll be glad to uh, talk to you about a naming opportunity. Uh, but if you know someone else who would like to help us with this project, we are certainly uh, willing to talk to anybody. Uh, Jeanette and I have already devoted a large part of our time to doing that, and we plan to devote more time to us. Uh, we have been promised that the building is going to be finished by January of 2015. This means that by the spring of 2015, we will have graduates who will have trained on the most advanced health care equipment in the world today. As I said earlier, this project came about because of the support from individuals who want to help RCC help this community. Thank you once again, the Reedsville Area Foundation, and a special thanks to Craig Cardwell, uh, Executive Director of the REF and the Reedsville Area Foundation Board, for your faith in RCC. We know that you took a leap of faith with us, and we will not, turn, we will not let you down. Naming the atrium and the skills suite within this facility in honor of this organization is not only a fitting tribute for REF, but it will inspire others to give generously with the, for the final phase of this simulated hospital. Thank you, Dr. Jen Nixon, for traveling with a group of us to see a similar facility at another community college, but not in the Triad region, <laughs> and to help us and others understand how important this project will be to Rockingham County. Uh, Dr. Nixon went with, with several of us to this other community college. It was Catawba Valley Community College. It's not a secret. And, uh, but she was pretty thorough in her investigation and then reported back to the Reeds Valeria Foundation and must have given them a good report because uh, we're here today. Internally, we have had the help from a lot of people to make this day and project happen. And I want to acknowledge those people very briefly. Gay Clifton, who is the director of the RCC Foundation, and her staff, Diane Heiler and Lynn Pruitt, they are helping us with some special tweaking of the, uh, the finances of this project through the Reedsville Area Foundation, and also uh, help from her board in approving this uh, sort of unique financial setup that we have. So thank you to the Reedsville, uh, excuse me, thank you to the Rockingham Community College Foundation and, and uh, Gay and her staff. Thank you to the RCC trustees for approving this project at a time when you have might have wanted to be cautious. You all took a risk, and I hope that you are seeing that sometimes risk is not a bad thing. Dr. Tony Gunn, who could not be with us today, he is out there at a fundraising conference. How more appropriate could that be? 
Uh, he is our Vice Pres Associate Vice President for, Facil for Facilities and External Affairs. He will be in charge of construction and has shepherded this project thus far. Tony has decided to give up golf and take up juggling because after this summer when he juggled about 10 projects going on, on, going on on this campus and got them in on time, I might add, and also will be having uh, three major projects going on this winter on this campus, he's decided he has no more time for golf. Jeanette Webb, whom you have heard, uh, uh, Jeanette, I got up in front of you, didn't I? I'm okay, I'll finish. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna let you. Jeanette Webb, who has been, I'm, I have an agenda here, but apparently I don't read very well. <laughs> Uh, Jeanette Webb, who's been working with my office to manage the fundraising for this project, and I can safely say that we, were it not for her efforts, we would not be here where we are today. Jeanette, thank you. Thank you for your help. <laughs> Kim Pryor, our public information director, who has been taking care of publicity, and along with Nancy Norwood and our print shop, has made sure that all our printed material looks good and is accurate. Kristen Merritt, who is over here, who we rely on all the time, and the information technology team, providing a lot of video support and technical expertise to make sure that events like this come off without a hitch. Tiffany Morris and the Health Sciences staff are helping us understand how this facility can enhance science education, health science education. Thanks to the senior leadership team, the guys that I depend on every single day, Dr. Bob Loudermilk, who is our Vice President for Student Development. He's out there someplace, I saw him. Uh, Dr. Jan Overman, whom you met earlier, who's Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Kathy Durham, Executive Assistant to the President. Thank you all for your help in helping me. Uh, finally, uh, thank you all in the audience for attending today. I'm going to sit down for a minute and let Jeanette give her remarks. About Jeanette, I apologize for stomping all over uh, your opportunity. Then I'll come back up and, and wrap us up. Jeanette? Thank you, Dr. Hellman. <clears throat> well, wow. You know, today has uh, been a long time coming, and indeed it is an exciting time for the college. Um, we're honored and we're most grateful to the Reedsville Area Foundation for your contribution, your commitment to our project. Their gift of $1.27 million combined with our current funds brings the total in hand for our project to $2.5 million. Our construction budget is $3.7 million. We are more than halfway to meeting our total goal of $4.8 million for a turnkey building. That will include the fits, the finishes, and obtaining the state-of-the-art equipment needed to operate this remarkable facility. With the gift that the Reedsville Area Foundation has provided, the campaign is now catapulted to the next level of funding. We know that all big ideas and ultimately big projects require more than one person to make it a reality. I would like to personally take this opportunity to thank Craig Cardwell and the Reedsville Area Foundation. It's hard to believe that what started as a conversation back in February of this year has led us to today. I appreciate his patience and his encouragement as we work toward bringing funding to the simulated hospital project. Also, thanks to the many people in the RCC family who has helped by providing assistance and planning for the hospital, assisting in getting ready for this day, and continuing to support this project in so many ways. Many of those people have already been named, so I'll not be repetitious, but I want to let everyone everyone at RCC know how grateful I am for your assistance. Speaking of family, family, community, and encouragement, I would like to speak to the family community of Rockingham County to solicit their help to bring home the project. We need your support to complete the simulated hospital. As Dr. Helmick stated, I was given a mandate. We're completing this project and we will have students in place in January of 2015. An ambitious goal, but not unattainable by the support from this community. I want to remind everyone, no contribution is too small and of course no contribution is too large. I just ask that you please consider 
partnering financially with a college to complete the simulated hospital facility, this place will have a lasting impact in the area of healthcare education and career placement. I thank you in advance for what I know this community will do. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you all again for attending, and especially the members of the press for being here today to help us get the word out on this. This simulated hospital is going to fundamentally change the way we teach health sciences at RCC, and you all are here at the beginning of that change. Thank you again for attending today. Have a safe trip home, and we look forward to having you back here when we open up this facility in January of 2015. Thank you. Thank you.